DJI Phantom <laughs> 4. The beast is released. We have the FPV. <laughs> okay, everybody. <laughs> this is an emergency broadcast, a news breakthrough, break in from rcgroups.com because DJI just released the Phantom 4, which I'm sure everyone knew that's what they were going to announce. Mm hmm. And uh, I have a few thoughts and theories. I am a Phantom 1 owner, and I never progressed after that, although I haven't sold my Phantom 1 because I consider it my four-wheel drive of FPV quads. I mean, it's a basher for sure for me anyway. So um, let's talk about you two, Jason Cole and Mecca. What Phantoms or DJI products do you personally fly? Uh, Phantom 2, uh, the uh, Pro, I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Basically archaic, right? And Jason, and, you've had more than a few, right? Yeah, I've got. Well, I've I've gone for the little higher end stuff. So I've got a. I had an S eight hundred. I've got an S nine hundred. I've got a Ronin that we put on a custom Octo. Uh, we're going all in. I have the Inspire too. Oh yeah. Sorry. Do you think you'll get the Phantom Four? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh man, you know that puppy's going to be expensive. Uh, well, it's it's all relative. It's not too bad. How much is it? Thirteen ninety nine. Oh, that's nice. And then I, is that the hundred dollars more than the Phantom Three Pro when it launched. Nice, nice. Now is that going to be its bottom tier of the Phantom Four? Are they going to go up and up and up? Because it looks like from the specs they only listed one kind. There is only one Phantom Four. There will not be two tiers anymore: a Pro and Advanced. It's just the Phantom Four. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh. it's pretty awesome, man. It's, it seems if it does what it says it does, it's going to be stinking awesome. Because the, the real problem I've had with Phantoms, if you get out of the hobby side and, and go towards what these things are really guild, geared for is professional use. Um, the Phantom 1, and, you know, 2 and 3 even, the 3 was a great camera, but it's still a single operator. It was difficult to get. Um, complicated shots where you have to do really, you know, precise image tracking or object tracking. That's where the two camera operator stuff is really a much better uh, thing for professional guys like the Inspire and the S900s and above. Um, the Phantom 3 wasn't really a professional level product. You could really just do basic shots with it you know, rises or flyovers and things that were just really simple and easy for a single operator to, to do because he's got to worry about obstacles, he's got to worry about tracking the shot, he's got to do all this stuff, and it's a lot for one pilot to do all by himself, especially the type of pilots that are buying the Phantom 3s, which are really low-time pilots um, with not a lot of RC experience, so it became even more difficult. But with the Phantom 4, there's some really cool technology inside that, if it works as well as it looks like it works, then it's going to really make it a lot easier to get amazing, complicated shots as a single mm -hmm. operator, which could really change a lot of budgets, a lot of price points for professional users. Um, pretty cool stuff. Well, let's go over some of the new features. They have TapFly and they have Active Track. Now, TapFly, this is all kind of firmware based uh, through your smartphone. The tap fly allows you to click a spot in your smartphone's live display, mm -hmm. and then the Phantom's going to fly to it. Uh, it. It through that it has those sensors. It actually has point cloud stereoscopic recognition, which sees 50 feet ahead and 30 feet below. You have your you have your traditional sonar facing down that the Inspire One has, yep. and now you have point cloud uh, recognition, which is going to detect obstacles in your path and adjust the path accordingly in flight. That's so pretty awesome that, right there. That is insane. And then you have active track, which is something that we've all been wanting for a long time, dated dated back 10 years. Well, it's something I've already tested on the Zero from uh, Exactly, Hikos. yeah. Like yeah, yeah you guys not the first people to have that one, so that's kind of neat. What right. About, I, I saw that on the return to home it utilizes that so it doesn't run into a mountain or a tree. Yeah, correct. Because you've now, seen the videos of people flying around the backside of antennas or something, losing signal, it triggers return to home, and then it flies straight into the antenna right. or the tree or whatever. Yeah, so the point cloud stereoscopic recognition is supposed to so fix that. all that. Yeah, yeah. and it uses, um, you know, and your active track's going to, uh, I assume it's going to also allow you to do, uh, you know, 
pan around objects like uh, like you can now with your with your phantom where you can rotate around autonomously mm -hmm. things like that also while using the active track technology so yeah, like you so said if it works as good like as a it moving, says um, canoe and it was able to do a, a 360 kind of orbit around it but while it was moving which was pretty cool. So that's it was panning, so you don't know if they were actually hand flying it or if it was on its own, and and I assume that remains to be seen. Yeah. But we can also talk about what what thing. One thing that caught my mind was the range and flight times. You have 28 minutes of yeah. available to flight time. We all know that that can be uh, glorified a little bit, and real world flight is always going to be different. But they're advertising 28 minutes of flight time from this new battery and a five kilometer flight range. Yeah. And that's HD right. transmission through the light bridge. Let mm -hmm. me let me be the wah wah. Yeah, yeah. I realize this is an international product and it's not U.S. based. Although I have to think a huge amount of sales are going to the USA, and this uh, completely doesn't uh, work with what we're having to sign with the FAA these days. You know, fly 20 minutes away from yourself. That's certainly. Yeah. No I think flight LOS. time is flight time is one thing. The 28 minutes is is great for duration, especially when you're hovering over a target, when you're getting ready okay. for everyone to get together. That fly five kilometer flight range, sure it can do it. Should you do it legally? Uh, that's debatable. Apparently not so by the FAA, and and we don't condone, you know, breaking these rules like that. But right. it can do it, and it's it's completely capable of five kilometer flight range. That's pretty good distance. Yeah, for, I'd rather uh, have HD. that buffer. You know, yeah, so yeah, it, yeah, even though I'm not flying, maybe I'm flying a half a kilometer away, but I know that I've got plenty of signal penetration that's yeah. going to get me there without worry. How and about through the, the pilot app, you can set up your virtual fence anyway. Yeah. And then how about the video where they're flying over the band of uh, Norwegian <laughs> rockers? <laughs> I like uh, those guys. I want to go see that band, but I would never fly my Phantom over the heads of that many people, even if they like had fur coats on. Yeah. They look like Norwegian versions of Guar. They have weapons to defend <laughs> themselves <laughs> with. <laughs> Use that Stratocaster to knock that thing. So, um, the new camera? Yeah, you know, they new, have a new, new camera. camera. Robust eight gimbal. Element. Yeah, they have an eight I'm element. Surprised. There were rumors that it was going to be a 6K camera, but I didn't really buy that. But I'm surprised that it's still just 30 frames a second, but it's good looking. You're footage. right. I agree. 4K yeah. Ultra at 24, 25, and 30, and then they have uh, 1080p. Uh, you have 60 and 120, which is pretty nice. Pretty awesome, 120. Yeah, I like the 120 at at 1080p, and then then they have the eight element lenses in it, and they put the motors higher up, so you true th theoretically are not going to get prop in your shot, and the gears wider, right? Yeah. You know what my favorite part is? Uh, and you know, like I can fly, right? Like I'm a pretty good pilot. I'd say so. You're all right. Yeah, I'm a pretty good pilot. Did 16 <laughs> years. I know what I'm doing. Uh, so they've got sport mode now. So yeah. with those higher motors, you'll be able to tilt more and get a whole lot more speed out of the Phantom than you could in the past. So it's going to be way more aggressive if you can handle it and want it to do that. So for faster tracking shots and stuff, it's going to be able to keep up. So that's pretty awesome. Hey, we have uh, a bunch of live viewers on. If you have any questions, hit the Q&A button in the upper right-hand corner. I don't imagine we'll be talking about this for an hour. So if you have any uh, Q&A, get them in now. So mm -hmm. let me hit, let me hit you with this. We know the price, 13 plus. We know the feature set. We know the camera, the lenses, the battery life. Um, for me, it seems like pretty. Uh, op the price seems right for what you're getting here. It's pretty cool, and... It's so mainstream, it's not even funny this time around. So yeah. these are going to be available in Apple stores, I think, in the middle of March, like the 15th or something, they said. Yep. I don't think that DJI could have picked a better time to put this thing out with the upcoming 4.4-pound micro UAS rule that's going to allow anything under 4.4 pounds to fly commercially. So this could be the answer for those operators such as myself and Jason who use big rigs but have sort of done whatever we've had to do in the interim. Now we can fly legally with these little things. What do you think? Yeah, I, well, they just pushed it back because now they're going to create a task force, mm -hmm. uh, task oh. force for that. So they're going to get industry experts and all that stuff, kind of like they did for the uh, hobbyist sure. registration system. So who knows how long that will take, but I think that's a great thing because – 
I mean, yeah, while you can do some damage with a Phantom, it's not as huge of a risk as flying a 30-pound red dragon giant movie drone. Yeah. You know, it's completely different risk factor. So I think that would be great if they could make it easier and more accessible for people to uh, legally, in the FAA's eyes, fly commercially with that. That'd be, that'd be awesome. So what do you think? Is it going to be a, another, um, is there going to be this huge influx of people that have never flown before that are going to become video experts starting their own business with the Phantom 4? They yeah, don't I register see it all with the, the FAA? Yeah. Yeah, I see it all the time. I mean, the, the, just in Nashville, you know, we've got a pretty big multi-rotor club here. And, I mean, we're talking, I don't know, 50 to 100 oh. <laughs> new operators that are doing commercial operations in Nashville. I mean, it's just exploded, and this is just a small little area compared and to the rest all of the country. And they'll all do it for $59.95. All the yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh. gotta... <laughs> well, I, yeah, know, I know we don't want to slide off on that, but uh, if you did do this professionally, I, I worked on movies for half my life. Uh, I know how much it costs an hour to make a real movie slash or video. Videos are cheaper, of course, but you can't come in with one unit, and I would, would not feel comfortable unless I came in with three uh, frames, multiple yep. batteries, multiple cams. You've got to be uh, smart enough to fly it. Jason, how, uh, let's say you know 100 guys who randomly bought. Uh, yeah. The, 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 the thing is, is <clears throat> excuse me, these guys are coming in at it on the bottom end, right? So they're like, I'm going to do real estate. Right, I'm going right, to do right. these, these small jobs where it's a single operator's fine. Um, it's not really high-end, big-budget productions. Gotcha. Um, okay. When you go to the movie level, we're talking $10,000 a day for a day rate for an operator, two two-man operator, maybe three-man operator system. Mm -hmm. And it's a completely different level. I've done that. So I've, I've shot a couple of movies. We've, we've done that. We know what that's like. Phantom 3 is not acceptable for a movie. Um, it's not going to work for that. You need something much higher end, much better camera. Um, I don't even think the Phantom 4 is going to be Phantom that caliber yeah. of movie, but it will be for, you, we saw the shots, you guys watched the YouTube video, for all you guys that are looking for it, the, uh, DJI just put out their YouTube video today on the Phantom 4, and the, the, you know, the 4K footage looks pretty good, they've post-processed the heck out of it, and right. it looks incredibly vivid and uh, very sharp. But it looks good. It looks it's really be great. great. I mean, for TV shows, documentaries, commercials, like music that. videos. We have a you question bet. on the price from <clears throat> Ruben. Uh, what was that? Thirteen ninety nine. Thirteen ninety nine USD. And uh, to answer your question, Matt, um, the only reason I'd own a quad like this would be for Joe Nalls or Seth. Yes. If I were you, maybe for XFC. I'll tell you this. No one at Joe Nall really loves having a big quad flying around while they're doing right. 3D down on the deck. I've never met any pilot that was like, awesome, there's an obstacle in my path. You know? <laughs> and there's been a couple <laughs> that have actually crashed in the process. They uh, crashed one I last mean, year, right, in the middle of yeah. the 3D flight line, man. No one, yeah. I, I heard some boos. Yeah. So, but to answer your question, me personally, um, I'm probably going to stay vested in uh, – getting my wing going, seeing if I really love it as much as I do, and maybe getting another one going after yeah. that. So no for well, me. Well, I've got an email out to see if, if we can get a review unit because we need to you know, have, have an RC Group's review of it and, and be able to test it and see yeah. how well those features actually work. Like I'd love to test out the the proximity um, you know, avoidance and you know, just see how well it can track, how fast it can track. Can it track an airplane flying in the air, an RC model airplane? Right. Uh, that, that's, that remains to be seen. That's an intense, yeah. uh, Never that's an intense thing to do. Even with a great video camera on the ground, me, it's hard to track these airplanes. But I don't know, right. man. I think I would, I would more, in my personal opinion, I'm more of a, a hand flyer, and I, I would take my Inspire one. And before I bought a um, a Phantom Four, I would upgrade to the X5 gimbal and camera, which is an incredibly great lens package and and yeah. frame. So I think I would do that before I invested in the Phantom 4. That's just yeah. me because I have a I have a Inspire 1. I think the interesting thing in the value and Jason and uh, Matt uh, this would be you on a different, you know, in the giant scale stuff, but Jason's reviewed so many of these dang quads 
from tiny to racers to uh, DJI full blown uh, units to uh, DJI one and two and mm -hmm. three. And so I, it would be interesting to see get your take on this one, Jason. Yeah. Definitely, and, and it'll be interesting to see this, if the stigma has changed in the production world with Phantoms because it's it kind of looked, you know, the old ones looked like a toy. It was kind of like showing up to a video production shoot with like a point and shoot camera. Yeah, you know, it's not professional. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't what you needed for that kind of environment. So this is it's a new design. It looks a little different. Maybe it's gonna you know, present itself a little better as a professional level product. We'll we'll see. You know, see how that goes. It could. It does it's not a... sexy. I'll tell you that. There's no sex here. This is a white egg with a camera. Oh yeah. man, they smoothed it off now, man. They I do sexy. think it looks better. I do think it looks better than the Phantom Threes and Twos. Okay, I just want to say this. Uh, we have the most. Uh, we just lost three. We have the most live viewers ever. Hey, uh, live viewers. Dang it! Don't leave. Hold on. Don't drop. I have one thing to say, then you can split. Um, we are broadcasting every Thursday, 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. We're trying that out for a while to see how many people will join us at that time. I realize it's in the middle of the workday, but the most, uh, the time most users are on RC groups is in the middle of the workday, and they all bail after 5. I know what you're doing because I did it too. Before I got this job, I was on RC groups at work. So uh, if you can join us, Thursday, 2 o'clock Central Standard Time, and we're going to try to keep that pattern up as long as we can until we decide maybe we need to go later at night or something. So anyway, okay, let's go final thoughts on the DJI. Hold on. On the DJI Phantom 4, 4, 4. Uh, final final thoughts from me. I think they they nailed it on the price point. I was, a, I was expecting 1500 all day for this thing. Uh, it's got some great tap and fly features you can still hand fly it apparently you can go really fast with it whether it's faster than the uh, Inspire 1 in manual mode we'll see but I think they did a good job this is good timing yeah I think they nailed the price point like you said I was expecting eighteen hundred to two thousand dollars so coming in at thirteen ninety nine is is pretty awesome for the advancement in the technology from the Phantom 3 to the 4 I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen from the other big companies, uh, like uh, the Zero, the new Zero Two Copter is looking pretty awesome with a, a similar feature set. Um, we'll have to see how well the camera compares, and then uh, I'm sure uh, the guys at Unique, you know, they they've been doing some good things too with the the Typhoon H. Um, that's a hex, so it's got a little bit more uh, uh, reliability and and uh, safety to it with an extra couple motors. And uh, you see what's coming up their sleeve for 2016. It's going to be an interesting year for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the TJI has always been the leader in this market, and I don't think there's enough innovation here to uh, call this the, the four. And this is the first time ever in the history of me being around these things, which is, you know, we've been around it since they were invented, that there were competitors that were not only nipping at the heels of DJI, but possibly exceeding what they're doing. So I'm going to have to say, uh, from a, if I were a salesperson, that uh, I'm not excited. I nope. think it should have more features. Interesting better. take. Yeah, that's, I could see that there you go. as well. All right. So, so I guess uh, before yes. we wrap up, right, we can just go over real quick. Some of these. This is the uh, the Phantom Four. We we're gonna we're supposed to see 28 minutes of initial flight time. We got the motors higher up to get them out of the way of the of the shot. 28 you point, minutes. You got point cloud stereoscopic recognition, 50 feet ahead. Stereoscopic. <laughs> now give me and some then 30 time feet here. below. You got tap feet fly below. and active link. Uh, tap fly and active track to uh, to fly without. Using the gimbals, basically, and then you've got five kilometer flight range and eight element lens with a 4K ultra um, recording. So decent. I think it's decent. Ultra recording. <laughs> oh my goodness! Nice. <laughs> this this makes it so difficult to do these things when you. <laughs> okay, I love next it. Next time you got to give me some time to get the effect in there. You know, All give right, me a little we'll pocket. We'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> warn you. Time. We got to stay pro on this. Yeah, buddy. Okay, so here's what's next steps for us three, we three editors of rcgroups.com, the world's largest and most active RC website. Uh, 
um, somebody in this group needs to create an article, and what we should do is feature the video they just released. Mm -hmm. They'll have the specs. I've yet to find a spec sheet. I've been looking. And then uh, I'll throw up the video from our little uh, live chat today, and yep. that will be out there for everyone to uh, check out since this will only be live for a few more seconds. Yep. All right. Thanks, everyone. There it is. It's Any up on the words? website. It's up on DJI on the front page now. So oh, it nice. took them a few minutes. They fell behind. We were all waiting and refreshing, and now it's there. All right, everybody. Join us Thursday at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time. I want to thank Matt and Jason for this RC Group's news break. Uh, this is the first time we've ever done this. I really want to do this more as things uh, news like this breaks in the future. Got a lot of viewers. This is great. I'm having a good time. All right, all right. Let's get back to work, y'all. Peace out. RCGroups.com. RCGroups.com. We have the FPV. <laughs>